My guest tonight is a fantastic comedian who hosts the hilarious Working It Out podcast. His latest book, The New One, Painfully True Stories from a Reluctant Dad, is available right now. Uh, Most notable, of course, of all of his accomplishments, though, is that he is a former intern on my show. Yes, he's part of that elite squad of titans. Please welcome Mike Brabiglia. How are you, Mike? I'm all right, man. We're uh, we're we're dealing with a couple feet of snow here in the east, but uh, yeah, we're hanging in there. Where in the east are you? We are in. I'm actually in. Me and my brother Joe have an office in Providence, Rhode Island. Oh, I know so Providence. I know Providence, Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, and so that's where we are. And actually, we do uh, we do virtual shows here. I'll show you the setup. Is we go to camera one is oh, wow. right here. We just flipped, we flipped it into a studio. And it's like camera two is right here. Whoa. Where we have the new jokes. And you got camera three right here. And then here's the super cam right here. That's fantastic. That's Peter, my producer right there. Peter. And uh, that's Peter. A, that's a, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't, let me get this straight. You have what looks to be, is it four or five cameras? Four? Four, cam- four you cameras. You have four cameras. Check it out. I've been on TV three decades. Look at this. <laughs> I got this shot. I got this shot. I got this shot. And I got this shot. I have one freaking I- camera. We, this is what we call the around the horn, and you'll you'll relate to this as being a mass hall. Yeah. This is this is we got uh we got Valentin to Noma, Noma to Fletcher, Fletcher to Mo Vaughn, Mo Vaughn loses the ball, the game is over. <laughs> this is infuriating me. Mike Brabiglia has has four times as many cameras as I do. You but we do the, well, the, we do these we do these we're in we're doing these virtual shows for Valentine's Day. We're doing six of them. It's like a live stand-up comedy show, and we created this because obviously I can't perform uh, in front of people. Yeah, well, I, it looks fantastic. Uh, I have to say, it's dynamic, it's inventive. My hats off to you because we had all the time in the world, and and this is uh, what we got. We're in an abandoned theater. And uh, <laughs> you actually, you actually know this theater. You've performed here a lot. This is the famed Largo Theater in uh, Largo, in Los Angeles. Largo is, first of all, <clears throat> joking aside, I appreciate what you're doing at the show by supporting Largo, one of America's greatest theaters, it's a great theater, hands down. And and actually, when when uh, when I was writing the book that you just held up, the new one. Um, my wife and I started merging poetry with comedy together. The book has poetry and comedy essays. And part of the, the process of doing that was at Largo. We, yeah. were, we were, I was doing the show in Los Angeles and, uh, and Flanny, who, who runs the joint over there at Largo, he's an Irishman. Yes, he is, uh, he is a like, native of Belfast, Ireland. And I... Uh, see him every day. He's the guy that looks after the theater and uh, and pretty much runs this place. Uh, and he's here every day to make sure it's COVID safe and to tell us thousands and thousands of stories uh, yes. about Belfast. And, and, and five or six of those are true, Conan. And, and but he but he he Flanny, really encouraged the Flanny, Just lean in the back. Come here. Get your ass over here, Flanny. Lean in, it's your friend Brabiglia! Hi, Mike! Hey, buddy! <laughs> Hi to Jen so, and Una. They're great, man! So, so Flanny encouraged me and Jen, because I, I remember, I think the first show we did was Judd Apatow's show yep. at Largo, and Judd said, come do comedy and poetry, and then Flanny was the one who was like, oh, comedy and poetry, I like it! Oh, Why don't I... he said, comedy <laughs> and poetry! The only thing that's missing are blue stars and green clovers. He does have that bootleg Lucky Charms business out of the back of the back of the theater. Flanny sells Lucky Charms that are not they are not made by General Mills, and um, <laughs> we just have to get the word out. It's like it's like bad meth that's out there. 
Don't touch that stuff, kids. It'll kill you. Um, you know what I was in, when I was an intern on your show, I was a control room intern and the one of the jobs, in addition to getting coffee and people always go, oh, you got coffee for Conan? Oh, I wish. I got, co I got coffee for Jordan Schlansky. Yes, Jordan Schlansky. I always keep a photo of him nearby. Jordan Schlansky has become uh, a oddly revered, <laughs> a revered and reviled figure because we started putting Jordan, this is long after you were on the show as an intern, but we started putting him on the air because we found him so odd and strange and kind of elitist and robotic. And we started putting him on the show everywhere I go now. Everywhere I go, people say, where's Jordan? <laughs> Is Jordan real? So you can tell everybody, Mike, you worked directly underneath Jordan as an intern. He was my main, he was my boss. Tell us, tell, us, tell people what he's really like. What I like best about Jordan what I like least about Jordan is it always seemed like he didn't like me. <laughs> he does give that impression. He always he does but get it. But, but in the end, on my last day, he goes, if you ever need a recommendation, here's my number. Here's my number. I go, oh, I guess he did like me. I don't know. I can't read this guy. Yeah. I think he wanted to trap you in some weird situation. <laughs> so then the, what I'm I like I'm being honest with him. you. When he says, give me your number, here's my number, call me to an intern, you know, you just... <laughs> You just have to be careful. That's all you have to do. So, so the, what I like best about Jordan Schlansky, and I asked if I could say this on air because I thought this is sensitive material, is that like he'd come back from these like very social weekends and everyone would go, Jordan, what'd you do over the weekend? And he would go like, well, me and my friends would go, we, we, we went into the mountains and we all got completely naked and then we sort of jogged around for a little while. And everyone would be like, what? And then he'd be like, well, we got completely naked and jogged, wait, what? Like literally like the what and him explaining it again kept happening over and over again for about 40 minutes. Yeah, what people uh, think, so many people have seen the videos I've done with him and they think that it's an <laughs> act and that he's a character. It's not. He really is that guy. And I can totally see him saying, yes, the body is beautiful. It is natural. And he, he talks like Spock. The body is beautiful. It is natural. There's nothing sexual at all about these encounters. We just yes. like our bodies to be free. We like our bodies to be in nature. Yes. And so yes. we like to move through space and time using our bodies. And we don't want to be encumbered by clothing. So... <laughs> What a weird guy. And you're Did not even exaggerating. I mean, that's what's amazing about it. And Bo, the reason why I think I thought he didn't like me, this is my proof, is that one day they brought in, someone brought in and handed out Conan and Conan O'Brien insignia golf balls. And it's a late night with Conan O'Brien. Why? I don't, I don't play golf. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Some idiot made those. I don't, that, I don't know. It was not me, but I guess someone made those. Yeah. So they handed them out. I, I hand him out. I go, Jordan, I go, do you think I could have a sleeve of Conan O'Brien golf balls? And he looks at me and he goes, no. <laughs> what? And so, and so what I, so Conan, what I got for you today is a gift and, and, and they yeah, can give this it to you just, over there. This just uh, was handed to me just before you started, uh, before you came online. I don't hold a grudge. Look at that. I don't that. hold a grudge. That is a... <laughs> that is a Mike Brabiglia golf ball. Now, let me understand. You asked, what, 15, 20 years ago if you could have yes. a Conan O'Brien right. golf ball, and you were told by Jordan Schlansky, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then you do this? Not for you. No, and that's when I knew as an unpaid intern. <laughs> that's when I knew as an unpaid intern, intern what my place was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was letting you know. That's so kind of you. Can I ask you a question? Did yeah, please. You just, did you just write your name on pen on this golf ball? Because <laughs> it looks suspiciously like that. That's a limited edition set, and it's uh, I'm priceless sure it is. as far as I understand it. So <laughs> maybe donate that one to charity. Uh, wow. Well, let me ask you this. When you were an intern, yeah. and... You, I know that you were very young when you interned for us. You were like yeah. 19 years old, I think. Right? I, was, I was 19. I was, yeah. Um, you, at the time, must have been interested in comedy. Sometimes 
you know, it's hard for interns because they're they're told you got to be professional. You can't approach That's right. famous people. Were you given that whole spiel? They gave me the whole speech at the beginning. Don't talk to famous people. Don't talk to the guests. But then uh, Jonathan Katz came on the show one time, and he was from uh, from uh, Dr. Katz, professional therapist, hilarious, one of, <clears throat> hilarious comedian. One of the one of the great TV series of of uh, comedy nerds like me. And he lived and worked in Boston. And my brother Joe, who had interned on your show as well, was living in Boston, was an aspiring comedy writer. And so I was, and so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce John Katz to my brother Joe. So I, I completely cross a line and I just follow, I get out of the control room, I spot him after he walks off stage and I follow Jonathan Katz. And I'm like, I'm gonna talk to Jonathan Katz. He, he makes a right turn into the bathroom and I had that fork in the road moment where you go, should I follow a celebrity comedian into a public restroom? And the answer Conan is yes. <laughs> I went into, the, went into the bathroom, I waited until he was washing his hands and then I said, Jonathan, I'm Mike Birbiglia. I work on the show. I didn't say I was an intern, but I was wearing a nice shirt and I and I looked 50 when I was 20, so I had a high, <laughs> high hairline. You know, my hairline was this since I was 13, basically. And, so you, and I could, so you could have been a producer for all he knew. I could have been a producer, right. I go, my brother Joe is an aspiring comedy writer in Boston. Can I put him in touch with you? He goes, oh, yeah. He's a soft-spoken guy. He goes, oh, yeah, absolutely. He goes, um, let me just write my number down. Do you have anything that I could, you know, write it in? And I was just like, oh, well, these paper towels, I think, could uh, we could write it on. And so then I, uh, you know, we I took out a paper towel. He wrote down his number, put him in touch with Joe. And Joe worked for him for several days. And uh, yeah, so I, I overstepped and uh, and actually if I, I don't know if this is inappropriate. I know this is your talk show. Uh, I don't know if this is the time or the place, but I was, uh, my brother Joe is uh, trying to figure out his life right now. He was an intern for you 20 years ago. And I was wondering if you would take a meeting with him, if I could give him your number. Uh, well, it's it's on the line to ask me on the air. It's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Joe's here now. No, that's my brother. That's my brother Joe. This is inappropriate. It's one thing for you and I to talk off the air, and for me to give you my number to have Joe appear on the show is way over the line. Joe, it's over the line. This is wrong. I'll show myself out. No, 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 Joe. Please stay. How are you, Joe? Where are you? I'm well. I'm in Rhode Island, also my home. You both are in Rhode Island. Yes. Okay. Uh, where and this is near Providence. Yes, right outside of Providence. Okay, big snowstorm coming down, huh? It's coming down right now. Okay. All right, let me tell you my Rhode Island story, okay, now that you're here. And yes, I'll do anything I can for you. Oh. But look, at, <laughs> but all I'll say to you is this, though, Joe. I will help you in any way I can. Your brother has four cameras. I have one. I think, <laughs> I think you're talking to the wrong guy. You ready for my Rhode Island story? Please. My, my grandfather uh, had a, a little cottage down in Rhode Island. We didn't have a summer place when I was growing up, so we would go and we would visit my grandfather. In the town, uh, there's a fancy town nearby called Watch Hill. There was this big mansion yeah. on a hill. So many, many years later, I'm walking through that town and I buy, there's a nice painting of that mansion uh, on a hill that looks out at the sea in Rhode Island. I buy it and I'm like, this is cool. This reminds me of my youth, my grandfather, hanging out with my brothers and sisters, going to the state beach. This is really cool and I put it up on my wall. Lo and behold, about five years after I do that, Taylor Swift buys that mansion, completely <laughs> redoes it, and it becomes Taylor Swift's like Graceland. Literally, there's like musical notes on the gate. Um, you know, it's this big thing. People yeah. hang around out front to try and see Taylor Swift. Yeah. I have that painting, and I put it in our guest room here in my house in Los Angeles. So these people come to stay with me, and I'm showing them the guest room. And they say, what's that a painting of? And I went, that's my painting of Taylor Swift's house. <laughs> and everyone's like, you're a fucking freak. Problematic. You're, you're a creep. You're a creep. And I'm, I didn't explain that I had it long. It's like a, <laughs> I had a painting made of her home. And I'm going to marry her someday. Because I love Taylor Swift. And I'll be Mr. Swift. <laughs> That's my story. I just wanted you to appreciate my Rhode Island roots. Joe had one story that I thought was really funny about being an intern. I go, do you have a memory of being an yeah, intern on the Joe, show? Yeah, Joe, you were an intern for us. What do you remember? I, 
I was. And one of the, the honors of being the intern was that you would once a week, it would be your job to order in dinner for Conan, Andy Richter and the writers and mm-hmm. throw their, you know, write their initials. Joe, on you, there, Joe, right? you know, this is Conan, right? I know that. I know. <laughs> it's been a long time since Joe a worked for me or B watched the show. So he right now thinks he thinks he's talking to a very pleasant middle-aged Irish woman. So, so, so the question was when I was ordering the dinner, because I'm you know I'm 20 years old at the time and you're it's stressful working in television for the first time like that. And it's the question was, can I put Conan's C O initials on his dinner? Or would, is someone trying to kill him, perhaps? Is that dangerous? <laughs> Guess what? I love that. Guess what? There were people out to kill me then. <laughs> and actually, they worked on the same network as me. So yeah. we, one, of them, one, of them, one of them was Jay Leno. I know. It's good. <laughs> yeah, what's one of his? What's, uh, what's one of Conan eating? Wait, can I just borrow it for a second? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'll take care of that little <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, you can buy tickets to Mike's Working It Out. Uh, and uh, and this is, uh, it's Working It Out virtually, as you can see. Virtually, Valentine's yeah. Day special on February 12th through the 14th. 100% of the proceeds from the final show will go to regional food banks, including one that I'm involved with in Lawrence, Cor Unum. Uh, so it really is, uh, this is very good. Tickets are available at burbigs.com. Com, the new one uh, is out there. Uh, Joe, Joe is going to be prowling uh, <laughs> just the state of Rhode Island. What? And he's available for various, you know, uh, schemes and plans. If you, anyone out there is looking to pull off a heist, I think we should get Joe involved. What do you say? You can you can spot him uh, swimming at the YMCA pool in Providence. That's right, in Barrington. In Barrington. Oh, very nice. <laughs> See, we got to plug in for everybody. That's the important thing. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you very much. It was a pleasure Thanks, talking. Conan. B- pleasure talking to both of you, and thank you for both of you for working for me for free. And yes, appar- oh, absolutely. And apparently, getting very little out of it. <laughs> and by the way, as I said on the podcast, my da- since you were my boss, I will always be uh, willing to be your intern. So name the day, and I will be on a flight <laughs> to Los Angeles to be a Conan O'Brien unpaid intern. You need to be here in six hours. <laughs> I'll be there. (laughs) All right, take care. Good to see you guys.